Student loan payments resume soon after a three-year pause for the pandemic. Finance Professor Dan Ricardo joins us live with a plan to pay up. Good morning, Dan. How are you today? What's up, Amanda? How you feeling? I'm doing good. Thank you. This is a uh, top of mind for many families right now. Yeah. Um, October 1st, I believe, is when those payments yeah. get back up and started. What do borrowers need to know today? What do they need to know right now? Yeah, 43 million folks around the country right now are sitting at the kitchen table, Amanda, saying, uh-oh, the party's over. Um, so here's the deal. The As you said, October 1st is when that first payment is due on their federal student loans. Uh, the average borrower pays about $393 a month, and 55% of all undergrad students leave the quad with a diploma and a payment book. So it's throughout the country, it's pretty much all different income levels, et cetera. This, this doesn't necessarily discriminate, discriminate against anyone. Lots of American families are impacted and they've got to get ready for October 1st. So Dan, what happens if an individual just can't pay is in a situation where that can't happen right now? Yeah, and that's really what the discussion is now. 62% of folks in a recent survey said, we're not going to pay. Either we can't or we don't intend to. That's probably a bad idea. So there's a couple things going on. The first thing is the president has announced that there's this so-called on-ramp policy, where for the first year, if you can't or won't make your payments, you won't be charged uh, penalties and you won't be reported to the credit agency. So no damage to your credit score in that first year. But interest does accrue so you're still that meter is still running so probably not a good idea amanda to just ignore it if you can't afford to make those payments um and you know it's really that interest meter especially on some of these larger balances that can really add up over the years and literally add thousands of dollars to people's bills and dan you mentioned that this wouldn't won't have any credit damage to your first right. year but what about long-term damage to your credit score yeah i'm glad you said that because that's really where the risk is amanda so here's the deal if you're not going to pay there are some alternatives or if you simply can't pay for example uh, there's these income-based repayment programs for federal student loans where you pay a portion of your monthly income and and that can help some borrowers uh, the president has announced his plan to try to expand that program to borrowers, uh, you know, make it a little bit more generous. We'll see how that goes. But the bottom line is this. If you're sitting at home this morning, sitting over your mini weeks, trying to figure this out, my advice is, number one, get your budget, revise the budget, try to figure out how you can start paying these. Um, you don't want to ignore this problem. Hope is not a strategy. If you truly can't afford those student loans next month, your best bet is to check out these income-based repayment programs, reach out to your loan servicer, let them know what's going on. There is help out there, Amanda, but you do have to be on the lookout for it. So, Dan, you're saying don't boycott this. That's a really bad strategy. So <laughs> I would not recommend that because the, at the end of the day, that's probably going to hurt folks the worst. Um, we've got a website on our screen right now, Dan. Yeah. Um, studentaid.gov. Is that probably the best resource that people can that go to is for a, information? Yeah, great government website. And yes, Amanda, I did say great and government in the same sentence. A great government website, studentaid.gov. It's got all sorts of good information. That's your portal to try to help you through this mess. All right, Dan Ricotta, find us professor. Thank you so much. We always appreciate you joining us. Have a great weekend, Dan. You too, Amanda. Take care.